Bishop Rosecrans presents Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, the tale of a miserly man who comes to realize the true spirit of Christmas. When this story first appeared, over 175 years ago, few observed Christmas, other than at church. Few employers gave workers off for the holiday, and the jolly country celebrations of England's past were largely forgotten in the cities. But this little story helped transform Christmas from a staid religious holiday into the joyous season of faith, feasting, and goodwill it is to this very day. Dickens' ghost story of Christmas opens in London on a cold, snowy December 24th in the year 1843. Once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house. Ebenezer Scrooge was a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner, a hard-hearted miser. On this evening, the office of Scrooge and Marley was shrouded in cold, bleak, biting weather. But external heat and cold had little influence on Scrooge. No wind that blew was bitterer than he. Merry Christmas! Humbug! Be gone, you miserable little beggars! Take your infernal Christmas carols and get away from my door! Sorry, sir. Merry Christmas, though, sir. Bah! And you, nephew, what right have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Merry Christmas! Bah! Humbug! Christmas? A humbug? Uncle? You don't mean that, I am sure. What right have you to be dismal about Christmas? You're rich enough. Don't be cross, uncle. What else can I be, Fred, when I live in such a world of fools as this? <laughs> Merry Christmas! If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would, <laughs> would be boiled with his own pudding. Ha! <laughs> and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Ha! Merry Christmas in your own way, nephew. And let me keep it in mine. Keep it? <laughs> but you don't keep it, uncle. Well, let me leave it alone, then. Much good may it do you. Much good it ever has done you. But Christmas time is a good time, uncle. And though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it, it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. God bless Christmas. Hurrah. You there, Bob Cratchit. Let me hear another sound from you and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Now return to those letters. <laughs> yes, Mr. Scrooge. Don't be angry, uncle. Come, dine with us for Christmas dinner tomorrow. Helen would love to meet you. Helen? Oh, yes, your wife. <laughs> Why did you get married, Fred? Because I fell in love, Uncle. Because you fell in love with a woman as penniless as yourself, Fred. <laughs> oh, good afternoon. But you never visited before my marriage. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Very well. Good afternoon. Oh, I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. Mr. Cratchit, see my nephew out. This way, Mr. Fred, and a Merry Christmas to you, sir. And to you and your family, Bob. How is Miss Cratchit and the little Cratchits, especially your youngest, the lame boy? Tim, sir. Tiny Tim. He's getting better. Thank you for asking. Happy Christmas to you, sir.
Um, two to see you, sir. Good day, sir. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley, my partner, has been dead these seven years. In fact, he died seven years ago this very night. I am Ebenezer Scrooge. Ah, uh, well, <clears throat> at this uh, festive season, Mr. Scrooge, we seek charity for the poor and destitute. You see, many of thousands are in want of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Um, plenty of prisons. And the union workhouses, are they still in operation? They are. I wish I could say they were not. The treadmill and the poor law are in full vigor, then. Uh, both very busy, sir. Oh, I was afraid that something had stopped them in their useful course. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear it. Well, they scarcely furnish Christian cheer, Mr. Scrooge. <sighs> A few of us wish to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. We do so now because it is a time when one is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. So what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Ah, <laughs> you wish to be anonymous, sir? I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support the prisons and workhouses. They cost enough. Let those who are badly off go there. Oh, but many can't go there. Yes, many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. I see. So the firm of Scrooge and Marley declines regardless? It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good evening, then. Very well. You have made your views quite clear. Good evening to you, sir. Mr. Scrooge? It's seven o'clock, sir, and it's Christmas Eve. So? Oh, <laughs> I suppose you'll want all day tomorrow, uh, Mr. Cratchit? If quite convenient. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. You don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. Tis but once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December, but I suppose you must have the whole day. <laughs> Be here all the earlier the next morning, Mr. Cratchit. I will, sir. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, indeed. Bah! And that concludes episode one of A Christmas Carol. Tune in next time where Scrooge will meet some unexpected guests, including an old partner he'd long forgotten.